evening. This is Left, Right and Centre. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Our big focus tonight. Did India shoot down a Pakistani F-16 in the dogfight with Pakistan a day after the Balakot airstrike? India has consistently maintained it has and even shared evidence with the United States. But now a well-respected US magazine called Foreign Policy has claimed that US officials have counted all of Pakistan's F-16s and that they are all accounted for. So does this raise doubts about India's version about what happened? Does the United States need to place the information in public domain? Does India need to place the evidence in public domain? From the controversy over how many terrorists were killed in Balakot to this, India's version of how things went down have been called into question by some. But are those questions legitimate? That's what we're talking about over the next 30 minutes. Well, let's take a look uh, in some detail at what Foreign Policy magazine has claimed. The magazine quotes two senior unnamed U.S. defense officials as saying that U.S. personnel recently counted Islamabad's F-16s and found none missing, directly contradicting uh, the account of the Indian Air Force, which has said that Wing Commander Abhinandan shot down a Pakistani F-16 before his own plane was downed by a Pakistani missile. Now, the article says that Pakistan invited the United States to physically count its F-16s after the incident as part of an end-user agreement signed when the foreign military sale was finalized. Generally, in such agreements, the US requires the receiving country to allow US officials to inspect the equipment regularly to ensure that it's accounted for and protected. Some of the aircraft were not immediately available for inspection due to the conflict, the report says, so it took US personnel several weeks to actually account for all of the jets. And now, they say the count has been completed and all the aircraft present uh, were present and they were accounted for. Well, the Indian Air Force has hit back with a statement today, sticking by its position that uh, they believe an F-16 was shot down uh, by uh, uh, Abhinandan. They have said, among other things, uh, that uh, there were a large force of Pakistani jets uh, that were picked up by Indian Air Force radars. They were uh, intercepted by the IAF's uh, Sukhoi's, Mirage and the MiG-21 Bison, which is what uh, Abhinandan was flying, uh, that all the attempts of Pakistani jets were thwarted by the IAF and uh, that the electronic sig signatures gathered by the Indian Air Force suggest uh, that the Pakistani jet was uh, at an, an F-16. Uh, that is what uh, the Indian Air Force statement essentially says. My colleague Vishnu Shom, who is our defense editor, uh, is going to first take us through more on what the Air Force is saying, Vishnu. Uh, one thing to remember, of course, Vishnu, is that uh, foreign policy, as I said, is a very well-respected magazine, but uh, is also not quoting anyone on record. They're quoting unnamed officials. The Air Force argument essentially is what? Do they know for sure that an F-16 was shot down or is this uh, an assumption that they're making based on, on whatever circumstantial evidence is there? Well, you can call it circumstantial evidence, but I think to to me, in, in speaking to to quite a few senior Indian Air Force officials today, uh, in a gathering in which uh, Ajay was also present, there is no conspiracy of 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 silence or of lying on as far as the Indian Air Force is concerned. They genuinely believe. It is my belief that they genuinely think that they did shoot down an F-16, and they believe that the evidence they have actually backs up that particular claim. Uh, that being the case, what is it that they're actually trying to say? There are lots of details, but I will point out only one detail. They showed us two tracks of airborne warning aircraft. One of those tracks had a symbol. It was Abhinandan's plane. There was an F-16 symbol right no next to it. This was off Rajori uh, across the line of control. The next frame, which in the timeline was just eight seconds later, had that symbology of that, that symbol of that F-16 missing, which they believe marked a shootdown. Further corroborating that evidence, they say that they have intercepted radio communications, tactical radio communications at that stage, uh, which indicates to them that one of the F-16s in this formation didn't return. However, it needs to be pointed out that I asked them actually if we could hear uh, that, uh, that radio transmission. They said that they had not been cleared to release it. So circumstantial evidence, but I believe fairly strong evidence certainly stronger than what we've seen in the past. All right, let's go across to our panelists uh, uh, with us tonight. Uh, Ajay Shukla is back with us, a well-known strategic affairs expert. He's, of course, served in the Indian Army as well. Air Commodore Prashant Dixit is with us tonight. Uh, also, Michael Kugelman from the Wilson Center joining us from Washington and author and commentator Shantanu Gupta joining us as well. Michael Kugelman, to you first, because uh, you were tweeting about this story this morning and you said that it actually uh, it, you know, hurts India's narrative post Balakot, on Balakot and post Balakot even further, uh, first sort of the international questions that were raised on the number of terrorists killed and now this. 
you've heard just now what the Indian Air Force is saying. Uh, you know, does that hold up according to you? Well, I think that uh, the optics for India are uh, very problematic here uh, because, as as you indicated, uh, this is a pretty credible American uh, news outlet and a very good reporter that uh, has had these conversations with these two unnamed U.S. officials who have said that they counted F Pakistani F-16s and didn't find anything missing. Uh, certainly, there's a lot that we don't know. There's a lot that we'll never know. Um, but I think the fact that we've already had so much controversy post balakot from the Indian side as to what exactly happened and as to whether the claims that uh, India has made are indeed completely accurate. We know there's been a lot of uh, uncertainty as to what exactly was hit in balakot if terrorist targets were indeed hit, if you indeed ha did have these many terrorist casualties that India has claimed to place. So I think it's in that context that we have to be uh, somewhat um, skeptical, in my view, uh, about some of these latest comments from the IAF. Certainly, there's been a lot put out there in terms of uh, uh, the, the proof that we're told exists, whether it's uh, Pakistani radio communications or sightings or electronic signatures or whatever the case may be. But until we see more indication that that proof exists, I think that uh, there is good reason um, to be skeptical. And again, considering what already happened over the last few weeks, um, given the, the questions about what happened uh, in the Balakot strike. All right, I'll, I'll take this to Ajay as well, that what do you think is actually stopping then the Indian government or, or the Air Force from releasing the evidence that we have? Uh, are there strategic reasons why this is not released? What, what are the reasons? Well, uh, the fact that the Indian Air Force is talking to journalists uh, means that the Indian Air Force really badly wants to put its case out. But the fact that it's not releasing the evidence officially means that it's being held back for at some level or the other. Now, the problem within this case is really very simple. It is that Pakistan has evidence that can be seen, that can be felt, and that can be put out. They've got the wreckage of a MiG-21, they have a pilot captured who was all over on television and they actually managed to occupy the high moral high ground in so far as Pakistan can ever occupy moral <coughs> high ground by returning him unscathed and uh, in good shape. The Indian Air Force has evidence too and it was presented to us today uh, as Vishnu brought out. But that's all technical evidence. It's all evidence in terms of radio intercepts, in terms of radar screens which are difficult to map and difficult to explain and for security reasons which they are not permitted to put out as well. So in this perception battle that is going on over here, India is at a very disadvantageous position compared to Pakistan. If I was in the place of the Indian Air Force chief, I would be going to the Prime Minister and saying, I need to put my case out there. It's a question of my credibility. But for some reason or the other, they're not doing it. Air Commodore Dixit, you served in the Indian Air Force. What, what's your take on this? After hearing Vishnu, I'm truly thrilled. It fills my heart to know that my own service did precisely that they had to do. They have shown him radar traces, and which he saw for himself that a blip had disappeared. They kept off some radio intercepts for reasons for those are one of secrecy. There are times, if you, if you recall, we, I was in front of you discussing Balakot pictures yeah. and that has not been divulged. Reasons for those are also similar. There are some things which you just can't share. But let me go stage forward to what Ajay has said about, you know, stature of two nations and what they have done. You know, there is a big strategy at play in some do defense officials going and counting some things and whose names are not being divulged. Lara Seligman is a known author, but she essentially is a Pentagon person. State Department has not... What, what is a Pentagon person? She, she covers been, the Pentagon. She has been with Pentagon all the time, doing Pentagon's bidding and writing. Ma'am, if I have to speak with great honesty, with no disrespect to her, I have read her for a long time. But, you know, the end user certificate bit is not sorted out by the State Department so far. They have not even accepted publicly that is written in the end user certificate. And then the Vijay Gokhale went there the other day and made the same pitch, but the State Department has not offered any uh, rationale for that. Yeah. On the other hand, the Seligman article appears one month, a month earlier, they are talking about the Lockheed Martin finding a niche amongst buyers in India, and month later, you get a report 
that all aircraft are being counted. Ma'am, this is a business strategy. A business strategy. Yes, ma'am. And let me also go on to add, there are problems in American aviation circles these days with the Boeing Max 737 Max problem and now Lockheed discovering that an F-16 has been shot down by uh, Bison. Those are problematic areas, I okay, think. Okay, that's an interesting take. I want to ask Michael Kugelman about that before I come to Shantanu about the political fallout of all of this. Uh, Michael, do you just want to take on what Air Commodore Dixit is saying there, that this is, this is actually a business strategy by the Americans to sort of put this story out there or plant it? Well, I'm not sure that I buy that at all. Uh, Laura Seligman is an excellent reporter uh, who's been a, doing a tremendous uh, amount of excellent reporting on Pentagon-related issues. She has good sources at the Pentagon, even though they're not identified in this article. Uh, you know, I don't see any reason to think that uh, what was reported should not be seen with a lot of credibility. And, you know, lest we forget, um, I don't see any reason why or any th these unnamed officials, these Pentagon officials, they would have no reason, no incentive to lie, uh, for that matter. You know, Washington is a city where you have a lot of hawks on Pakistan. You have a lot of folks that are not friends of Pakistan. And if there really had been a Pakistani F-16 that was shot down, you know, someone, one would think, would have come out there and been willing to, to leak or admit the fact that it had been shot down. Uh, so I think that's an important thing to put out there. So I really don't think that we should try to poke holes in the report. It. Certainly there's other issues to discuss, such as these points that the IAF has brought out today, uh, and I think that's, that's worth pursuing. But the actual article itself, I really don't think we should look at that as, as, as a problem. I don't think the United States or the U.S. government has any reason to hide or cover up the fact uh, of any sort of... Um, which is why activity. which is why it actually becomes important, I think, for uh, as much as India, uh, Vishnu, then for the United States to also make public, uh, you know, what evidence India has shared. India has shared evidence uh, with the U.S. as well. I'm presuming that this radar's uh, uh, f um, pictures that you were shown today would have been shared with no, the Americans it wasn't. too. No, it wasn't. And we actually... But why uh, not? I actually, Ajay asked, uh, or someone asked, uh, you know, why or, or whether that was actually shared. And the Indian Air Force said, no, why should we share it? What business or what requirement is there to share it? But I do believe that the Indian Air Force at some stage, perhaps earlier on, certainly earlier on, should have gone to the Americans and, and said, since you do have end user agreements with the Pakistan Air Force, since the buy of even Jordanian F-16s, which have entered the Pakistan Air Force, is regulated by U.S. Uh, policy, give us an idea of what you think on the numbers of F-16s that do exist. Perhaps that should have come in simultaneously as the Indian Air Force claimed that, look, we have scored a hit on an F-16. This article has now come up and now we find the Indian Air Force a month and a half later jumping to provide some sort of explanation. I believe the explanation given today is pretty valid. It's uh, pretty understandable. But it should have come a long time earlier on. And certainly reaching out to America was important. And yes, Nidhi, America should speak about this. But they their won't. Silence, I, their silence is I, That's what I'm coming to Ajay about. That Do you really expect the Americans to take a public position on this, given the sensitivity of their relationship with Pakistan? Uh, are the Americans just going to sort of be safe and, 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 and not make any public statements? The Americans are absolutely going to play it safe over here. Uh, they have huge stakes in play in Afghanistan right now. Pakistan is delivering the Taliban to, to, the, to them at the negotiating table. Uh, they want to keep Pakistan on the right side because of its growing proximity to China. Uh, and they know that India has by and large achieved its aims in this Balakot strike and in the air battles that followed. Uh, the aim was as much domestic political as it was to signal to Pakistan. They know that Mr. Modi is satisfied with the outcome of that uh, sort of sequence of events. And they know that they will not push beyond a point. So I think the Americans are where they want to be and they are exactly. not going to take this any uh, further. I just want to get Shantanu in here because, you know, so much of this is playing out on the election campaign. Shantanu, Mr. Modi keeps talking about Balakot uh, and, and, you know, politically, uh, you know, the, the significance of this. Uh, do you believe that, uh, you know, what uh, the U.S. is claiming or these U.S. officials are claiming? I mean, do you, do you think the Modi support base is going to care uh, or that it's already made up its mind uh, that India did a great job, it killed hundreds of terrorists and, and brought down a big Pakistani jet? 
I think Nidin, I think not at all. It will not not bring down any of Indians' claim. And I think this is very interesting that because of India's assertiveness from from last four five years, now foreign media and the three cases which we have seen in just last couple of months, B is this F-16 uh, 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 MIG claim, uh, B on NASA's claim that ASAT have released so many debris and though they have uh, uh, released uh, tons of debris and also the Reuters news that came of Pulbama. So all of them, all of a sudden, India's assertiveness, I think they're not able to uh, digest India's assertiveness under N Narendra Modi. And international media is playing its trick, which have, they have played time and again with various other countries. And in Indian land, it's not going to do any effort. Indian people are with Prime Minister and Indian Air Force. Uh, uh, Ajay, just your quick take on the, the political fallout of this. Is there any? Again, any no, I think I thought just, that... Just, uh, just, just, no, just need need 10 seconds, but I think there is a huge need. Yes, go ahead, Shantanu. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, huge need. No, I think that yeah, uh, there is a huge need of a, in, a, a of a international media from India, international electronic media, election, uh, international print media, which will talk about the international news from India's perspective. We we always miss that. We always have to believe for or on a, on a BBC, on a Reuters, on a Washington Post, on a Al Jazeera. There is a high need. Uh, for an Indian international uh, broadcast. Well, generally we would believe them a little more than some of the unnamed uh, television channels. Uh, but but I, I, I get what you're saying that you don't have to blindly believe everything that the Western news media writes. But Ajay, just on the political point, since you follow pol politics so closely, do you think this plays out in any way? The Congress and the opposition actually have been very careful today to stay away from this issue. I think I they're think trying that, to avoid uh, getting dragged into an, another national security to debate. To argue at this stage that there is an international media conspiracy against a resurgent India under Pr Prime Minister Modi is to go back to the days of Indira Gandhi and her you know, foreign hand and her Indira Gandhi statement that the CIA is conspiring against India. Let's be realistic over here. India is a major in global power now. It is not going to be sort of bullied around by any sort of cabal of international media organizations. So let's not let's take their reporting, evaluate it for what we consider it worth, uh, and not believe in little conspiracy theories against India. Hey, Komar Adikshit. You know, all I can say is that you know uh, the the big bison is quite capable of shooting down an F-16 within a certain parameter. Oh, yeah. You know, it can fly out, climb up by 10,000 feet per minute extra. It's possible. So if it gets closer in, it could do it. And it had done that in the past. In Cope India exercises, of which I attended at least two of them, the, the big bison came out shining. Now, one has to understand, the Indian Air Force spends a lot of energy at the tag day to discover, to find out these new uh, tactics and strategies. It has achieved. But may I take this uh, uh, thing? It's not political at all. It's got something to do with the Americans trying to find a little space in our own uh, relationship with Pakistan. I still believe it's business. You still and believe it's business? Yes. Nidhi, and it? if it's yeah. writers first and now uh, the foreign policy, they may not be linked. But well, this quick, is quick last business. comment, Vishnu, because I have to head into that right. news that we're breaking at, on the bottom of the screen. We yeah. aren't going to get to this bottom of this mystery very fast, possibly. Let me ask you a question, Nidhi. Squadron leader A.B. Devaya was shot down in the 1965 war. He won a Mahavir Chakra. Yes. You know how many years later? 23 years. 23 years later, when there was an admission or a sense that, look, this is what happened. We will never get to the bottom of whether this Pakistani F-16 was shot down among other things. All right. Well, thank you very much to all of you for joining us this evening on a, what continues to be a fascinating uh, story, uh, which the international media certainly continues to have a lot of interest in.